Today I recorded a video that is a little bit different than what I normally record. I wanted to document our garden happenings, but all day I was busy with Hugo or with chores or with errands, and it got to be the evening of July 4th, and I finally got myself out into the garden and I thought, you know what, let's do a tour. Everything looks just a little bit different at night, and I really wound up charmed and kind of fascinated by what my plants were doing when I was asleep. So this is around midnight, and I'm just giving a little orientation here of my starts. These are my farmer's market starts. Um, I'm trying to take a peek at all the tags just to make sure that I document which plants looked like what, when, uh, at the beginning of July. This box here, I specifically set aside to keep all of my brassicas in. I still have to move a few in there, but my goal was to keep the cabbage butterflies off of it. Um, a few of these are eaten but i did get most of them in here and after picking off caterpillars for a couple days i so far have not had too many casualties which is great we get the cabbage butterfly pretty prolifically up here in western washington um, i'm in skagit valley specifically and these are what my cauliflower broccoli and brussels sprouts look like so far I sometimes struggle to get the cold box back into its proper alignment, but it does screw down so that wind doesn't blow it open. Uh, and I shove the hinge together because there's a gap right at the top if I don't shove it just like that. Now it is seamless. After the heat wave, I clamped a plastic tarp just to block out the western sun from the garden starts area and so far it's doing a pretty good job of keeping this area less than sun blazed. I found a banana slug. I can tell it's a banana slug because it looks like it has that uh, football player padding around the neck, the shoulder pads. I think it's called a mantle. Oops, sorry little guy. These are more brassicas that I need to move into the cold box. These are dino kale, and this is what it looks like when you leave them out where the cabbage butterfly can get to them. It lays one big-ish egg on the underside of the leaves. I'm checking here to see if there's any of the caterpillars or the eggs that I can show as an example. I didn't find any, but usually they hatch out and then just eat an entire leaf or two and carry on their way. I'm pretty sure these will grow. I'll plant them in my garden and see, just in case. This box was for my leftover plant starts that I just didn't have the heart to compost. And there's just way too many tomatoes and a couple mystery squash and chard and I think a couple peppers all of them were mislabeled so I couldn't sell them at the farmers market nor do I have any idea what they what they are variety wise but I just figured why not plant them in a box and see what happens this is my mint and I'm kind of embarrassed but I had no idea that mint goes to seed like this I guess I should have anticipated that they would have flowers and that they would flower and go to seed but when I rounded the corner I think this is the I realized this is the first time that I've seen mint flower now this is curled leaf parsley and this I'm pretty familiar with there's a little spider doing good work this is a leopard slug pretty similar to the banana slugs but it doesn't have a mantle. It also eats green and brown or alive and dead plant matter. 
uh, the banana slugs usually just stick to your dead plant matter, which is why they're great in the garden and a native species. I think the leopard slug is an invasive species. These are my sweet potatoes. And looks like another possibly leopard slug. I couldn't even tell which was the head and which was the tail of this one. <laughs> kind of strug, strug, slug struggled with this one. Bleh. This is pretty exciting. My lemon trees still have lemons on them. And they're actually getting bigger. I think I cracked the code. I think that watering from above or when water or moisture gets on the leaves or maybe the lemons themselves, it will cause them to fall off. So I, I just kept them underneath the greenhouse this year, even through the heat wave, and they did great. I am really surprised at how little yellowing they have, which is really common, um, the yellowing, but they're pretty healthy. I've got lemons on both trees. They're growing in size, and I've got more flowers on the way. So I'll be interested to see if they ripen. Maybe it just took a few years for my trees to reach maturity. My butter crunch lettuce, which I don't know how, but survived the heat wave. A brown slug, that's definitely invasive. Another one. Oh, wait, no, that's a beetle. These guys eat slugs, which is pretty cool. Baby slugs and slug eggs mostly, but they'll take on a full-sized one too. My lavender is blooming. It's doing pretty good. Oh, another spider. Pretty lady, I think. My parsley is going bonkers. I'm hoping it self-seeds. I've still been eating the leaves just because they still taste like parsley. And I left all the flowers for the pollinators. My cilantro is looking pretty majestic. I purposefully let it just go absolutely hog wild. The goal is to prop them up like this once they get to be seed bearing and just let them completely take over this box. My fig over here is doing really great in this pot. I'm kind of surprised. It's doing better than my other fig. I've got sedum coming up everywhere. I've got them coming up in the boxes, in the planters, in the gravel. This is how hard our compost is right now, how dry and crusty. I tripped over a lump of it and it broke the skin. Our peach trees are doing fabulously. They are loving this heat and I think Jess is watering them. He jokes around that everything I'm excited about, oh there's my other fig, not quite as big, but it's doing okay. That everything that's doing well is only doing well because he's secretly watering them. And I'm not gonna knock it. I'm pretty grateful. And I'm just kind of blown away that we've got two pretty healthy looking peach trees in the Pacific Northwest. I'm thinking part of it has to do with this sand that we're on. I just let it capture the heat during the day and radiate it up at night. Our poor blueberries, though, are not liking the heat. This is adjacent to the peach trees, and they are crispy. I think we're going to have to trim these blueberry bushes kind of back to the roots, or not roots, but back to the base at least. Here's another example of one of the smaller ones that still got roasted. But there is hope. I let some get overgrown, and they seem to be a little bit more shaded. These two are more in the shade of the shop, and they're doing okay. Uh, I'm wondering how long they'll hold out. We plan on transplanting them. My elderberry is doing great. So far, it hasn't looked like it's struggling at all. I have two of them, one smaller one and one bigger one. This is their second year, I think. 
or they just overwintered their first winter anyway. And look at these beautiful little flowers. I'm not sure how to harvest elderberry or even what they look like, but I know that these are the flowers because they've got teeny tiny little blooms. They're just stunning at night. Those are the blooms. So teeny! My potatoes are turning into more of an experiment than I anticipated this year. Oh, more brown slugs. Those are in the pathway right next to the potatoes. Three of them just sort of hanging out. All of the straw that I put on top of my potatoes seem to have sprouted. <laughs> Usually there's some seeds left in straw. Hay is the same thing, but with the seeds left in. Uh, straw is supposed to be with the seeds taken out, but there's always a few seeds that are mixed in. And it looks like all my potatoes shriveled up and died. And this was happening before the heat wave, so I'm not entirely sure what happened. I don't know if it was blight related. It was really early in the season for blight, and I just planted them in, what, April? May? I have no idea what this plant is, but it just sort of seeded here and has the most gorgeous yellow flowers. This is my leftover experiment bed from the winter. I planted all of these seeds around November just to see what would come up and when, and now I have Russian red kale, some buttercrunch that's going to seed. I've got some spinach that's gone to seed that I need to let dry out a little more before I can harvest. Little dew drops on the ends of all these leaves, which is surprising because it was in the 80s today. I didn't know that they captured so much moisture. Biology is crazy. My zucchini plant that I got from our neighbor Whitney these are the spinach that have gone to seed that I need to let dry out some more. And my corn! Oh, Hugo's snorting in my lap. I'm doing my voiceover in the middle of the night, too. Here's our grape vines. We've got itty bitty grape babies on there! We're not sure what varieties each plant is, but we know that we've got Pinot Noir, Madeleine Angevine, and one other that I'm not quite sure the variety of. But once we get grapes more reliably, we should be able to figure it out, or at least pinpoint. They're doing really well this year. We really haven't given them much water. We watered them a couple times their first summer that they were in the ground, and then after that we pretty much neglected them to get them hardy. This is my asparagus. It's going to seed as well. Typically or traditionally you harvest asparagus until the 4th of July and then you let all of them fern just like this. All of the stalks fern out like this when they're not harvested, when they're just a little, a little spike. They're getting to be a pretty good thickness. I'm pretty excited. Oh, blackberry bush. My trick for getting blackberry bushes when I don't have gloves is just digging to the roots because that's the part of the plant that doesn't have any thorns. Usually I can get a pretty good section of the root. Here we go. Bell pepper, tomatoes, Anaheim peppers. 
more asparagus, and strawberries planted as ground cover, but struggling because of the heat wave. Lots of asparagus shoots. They'll keep sending up shoots throughout the year, and then in the fall they'll go dormant. My first pepper flower! My first pepper flower ever, because this is the first time that I've planted peppers. And these tomatillos are absolutely insane. I grew one tomatillo plant last year, and it was a Hail Mary planting, and it came up pretty strong, but these were actually planted intentionally, and look at how big they are. They are huge for scale. These um, Anaheim pepper plants are about seven inches tall, maybe. Check out the taproot on this weed. That is no dig. Another flower on these peppers! Yellow onions from last year that have gone to seed. I'm trying to seed save from them because the sets that I got from Burpee last year were very successful. And a roly poly bug. I'll leave him be. My cabbages half of which went to seed, and they're not quite dry enough to harvest yet, so I have a little waiting to do. But then my couple other cabbages that headed up, I had no idea that they would actually develop into anything remotely like a cabbage, so I've just been letting them grow. Should be able to harvest pretty soon. These are Red Express cabbage, and they're supposed to be a, a fairly small head. But they still have a little bit of ways to go. On one of the cabbage plants, you can see the aphids have taken it over. Here's one of the only onions <laughs> that has grown in the garden, where I actually planted from seed. It makes me really sad that I did snap off all of the onion flowers when they were all flowering because I wanted to save seeds, uh, but I expected more to actually produce. This is the only one that has multiple leaves. The rest kind of died off or look like this. Onion sets. This is our monster beet. It's starting to shrivel up at the base, so I know that the energy is pretty much going down the stalks and into the seeds at this point. Which is fine for me, because I wanted to harvest the seeds and use them to plant more beets. They're not quite ready yet. Hopefully, if I leave them out, they'll get a little bit drier and I'll be able to just brush them off into a basket. This is a really good example of an onion that just grew to that size, then the top died, and I just plucked it and brought it into the house. Hopefully I'll be able to plant it this fall. This is my cucumber plant. I believe it's burpless cucumber. I'm trying to get it to grow up this trellis. Lots of flowers! Crossing my fingers, first time growing cucumber, and I've got little baby cukes, so prognosis is good. Meeny, meeny. These are my squash plants. I've got acorn, probably more acorn here. It's already starting to take over this side. I've also got melons. It's a little bit harder to pull weeds out of the compost pile, but you still get a pretty good root mass. And then we've got watermelons. I had no idea I could grow these here. I just put them in on the off chance that I could grow them in just compost. And we've got a little one. Look at all of this foliage. 
Hopefully that isn't just a fluke, that eedy beedy baby right there. I saw more flowers, so I'm pretty hopeful, but I don't really want to count my chickens <laughs> before they melon up. I think this guy is a cantaloupe. And then I've got more, I believe, sugar ready in this corner. It's like a spaghetti squash and a pumpkin cross is supposed to be a little bit sweeter than normal spaghetti squash. If I see leaves like that with the brown, I usually trim it, but they're so prickly that I couldn't quite get my hand on it. Oh, itty bitty pumpkin! I think these are the Rouge de Tams. You can always tell squash from melons because the flowers are huge compared to the melons. Here's my hops. Super pretty. And super healthy looking. I haven't seen any pests on my hops. Or any insect life really, but I know that they're on there and I know that they pollinate. My delicata squash is putting up some male flowers. Looks like I found a weed here. I'm gonna pull it out. Oh man. That is satisfying. Anyway, the delicata is putting up mainly male flowers. Same with the pumpkins, all the squashes right now. And those male flowers are long and skinny and they fertilize the female flowers, which come up second usually. My tomato patch, which I'm pretty proud of. I still need to tie them up, but I actually put stakes in this year instead of just making a crazy trellis. I, the trellis actually fell apart, so I could use all the components as stakes. That was good engineering on my part. Here's a volunteer Russian red kale and a volunteer weed. I'll probably replant the kale so that it's not right up against the tomatoes. Ooh! Look at all those flowers! I'm so excited. I'm keeping up with pruning for the most part. There's a waterer that Jess installed that I've used a couple times. Anaheim peppers, just revisiting those, but from the other side. Same bed. Cherry tomatoes over on this side. Roma and cherry, I believe, and then on the side I was on previously that goes perpendicular to this. It's the Mortgage Lifter and Cherokee Purples. So that's just about it that I've got in the garden right now. Everything's looking really great. Um, I'm really, really pleased with the soil. The manure from last year really helped retain moisture and I've had to water maybe twice or three times this whole year. So looking forward to more. Have a good one, guys, and enjoy your evenings or whenever you watch this.